Hi, I'm Sid Javers, and first off, I'd like to thank you for uh, purchasing our Bob Top. Uh, it's a product we're real proud of. We've put a lot of time and energy in, and uh, we're going to show you how to install it today. As you can see, we have all the pieces laid out that come with the top. Uh, you want to pay attention to how you remove it from the bag. The bag is so divided so that all these pieces slide back into individual pockets and keeps from beating itself up when it's riding around in your trunk. First thing we're going to do is take the top and assemble the frame here on the bench, then we'll set it on the car and go through some of the procedures there. I start with putting the, the little links piece that we call it. Install it up in here with the thumb screw. You're going you're gonna to have this all back apart two or three times before it's all finally assembled. Then I take the H piece, snaps of course go to the bottom. Start one end just a little bit. Take the other side, do the same thing. Now this one looks like you have three that kind of need to go together all at once and makes it a little tricky. You really don't need to. Just put the two back ones in slide them together, then these will slide in on their own. They're Delrin bungs, so they have a little flex to them. There, it's all together. Now we'll just set it on the car. Install the header bow and move on from there. Okay, we got the frame assembled. Now we're gonna set it on the car. One thing I do wanna mention here, this can be done by yourself, but it's a whole bunch easier if you have a helper. So get, get one of your buddies to help you install this. It'll make it go a lot smoother. While we're installing this here, I want to mention this little blanket we have set down here. Obviously, you want to protect the car. We use a real thin blanket because as, you'll, as we go through, you'll see why. We want this thing sitting just right on the body with just a little space on it once we're, we're done with our front arms. We'll go through that again a little bit later. Let me mention something here with these tabs. These tops are designed to work with a factory Ford 32 tab. I think it's about three and a quarter inches back, inch up, whatever. We have the measurements and we can send them to you. But it's designed for that specific tab. Now, as we know in hot rodding, there's a hundred ways that you can get to the same place. This particular gentleman made his own tabs. They slide up and down and they're set inboard. For that reason, we had to put an extra spacer on here. You may find on your top, some of the fiberglass bodies are a little thicker at the back. You may have to put a little more space in there, a washer. You may have to take a little off of our spacer to move it in a little bit if the tab's out too far. Those all can be done very easily. Now the original tabs on a Ford measure approximately 50 inches apart. Now they can be any 51 or as small as 49. Now you'll also notice if you were to measure this top sitting on the bench, these mount points are probably about 52 or 53 inches wide. So don't let that bother you. This top is made, it's engineered to have a little spring in it so that you pull it in a little bit. So don't be surprised if you mount one side and then you've got to push the other side in a little bit. That's normal, that's the way it should be. Again, about 50 inches apart, as long as you got a little push in, it's all set. Okay, once we have the frame mounted on the tabs, sitting on the back of the body, now we're gonna mount the header bow, then we'll do the arms that connects the header bow to the top frame itself. So let's grab the header bow and install it. Okay, on the windshield posts, um, there's a lot of different manufacturers of these posts. Some of them have the little keyway here that keeps the headpiece from falling all the way down. Some of them don't. You just set these on here. This one actually stops. Some of them will go too far. It's, it's fine because you can move them up to match on the header bow. So you set both of these on the posts on each side. Set the header bow so that it touches against the frame then you may actually, on this particular car, like this one, we'll move it up just a touch so that it's level with the bottom of the header bow. And then we have to determine how much slap there is between side to side so that we center the header bow. So there's about eh, five-eighths of an inch. We're going to move it back about halfway. You can take a measure and get this perfect. We're going to have done enough of these now that I can pretty much eyeball them. Okay, once we have it centered between the two headpieces, then we mark our holes 
and we'll go over on the bench and drill and mount one. I just mount one side, then I set it back on the car, and then I do the other side. I don't try to do both at the same time. It just seems to be easier to get one on, then go over and do the other side. You want, you want to center this head bow between the two header pieces, header mounts. And there is instances where the windshield is too narrow, and this actually won't fit down between the two head pieces. In that case, you may have to take a little bit off the header bow with a saw. It's no big deal. It's pretty rare that that happens because most of the windshields are the same width apart, but, but it may come up. Now, once we've marked our holes, we go over and drill them on the table, bring it back over here, do the same thing to the other side, and the header bow's mounted. Now we just use an eighth inch drill. We drill all our holes. Now, like I said previous, I like to just do one side, then I install this back on the car and mark the other side. That way it's less chance of errors trying to do both sides because nothing's really mounted and everything's moving. This way you've got one solid, you go back over, mount the other side, drill the holes, and it fits perfect. Okay, now we're going to show you how to do one of the more critical parts of installing this top, the arms going forward. And we'll go over a few scenarios of what may or may not happen in your installation. And it, it's pretty easy to solve all the problems given, given the tools to do that. First thing I do is I remove this thumb screw and get the link and this particular bar out of the way so I'm not fighting this. Set that down on here, you come and look, right off you see a potential problem. This doesn't line up perfectly. That's quite normal. Sometimes you'll get lucky and that'll line right up and sometimes you won't. And it's, it's real easy to put a little extra bend in this and get this to line up. The other thing you want to make sure is that this has just ever so slight amount of tension going back. You want to hold the back of this down against the body. I know everybody wants to put this up so it doesn't rub the paint. And that's not a problem. When we snap the top on and pull this forward, it raises up about three-eighths of an inch. If you were to set this up with about a three-eighths of an inch gap now, as soon as you tighten your top, you'd have a big gap in the back. So we don't want to do that. So we want to set this up so that it has just a little bit of pressure down. And I'll show you that with this arm right here. First thing we need to do is put a little more bend in this arm. And that's pretty easy to do. You just take it over on the floor and bend it. Now, if we didn't have enough bend, I'll show you a simple way to straighten it out a little bit. We take it on a high boys. We're kind of easy. We have a tire here so we can do it. And we just bend on this a little bit. Just put a little pressure on each side and it'll take a little of the radius out. These are all powder coated, so you can put a little flex either way on this and it won't hurt the paint. This particular one, like I said, we need to go over a little bit more, so we'll go over on the floor and just bend this one. I'll show you how we do it. Okay, this is pretty easy to put a little more bend in this tube. We just take a piece of wood to protect the tubing on the floor and a piece here to protect your hand and just put a little bit of pressure down on it. You'll feel it, you'll feel it. Just, and, and remember, just, just sneak up on this. Don't go too much. Go back and forth, try it on the car, and just sneak up on it till you get it right. As you can see, we're pretty close. I want that thing so that when it has tension up, that lines up. I still need just, just a little bit more. Pretty close, but just a little bit more. You don't want it this way because that you've already allowed a little, a little up on the back bow. So you want that thing so as you're, as you're putting just a, a little bit of pressure up, that's when you want it, that's how you want it to line up with a little pressure back, just a little bit. Let's put a little more bend in it. Like I said, just sneak up on it. And this is not unusual. I know this seems kind of funny. Well, hey, I'm buying this top and I got to bend things. It, all these bodies are different. The windshields are laid different. This, this is just normal. This is just a normal installation deal. A little bit more. As you can see, as I add a little pressure up to this, it's lined up and we have it bent just right. There is cases on some of the windshields where this piece of tubing off the head bow piece is not lined up with the arm going forward. That happens quite a bit on SoCal and DeVal windshields. That's because a lot of the cowls on all these different cars are a different angle and it 
forces the, of course, the windshield to be a different angle, which means this is going to be at a different angle. So you can take the arm and you can actually put what we call a little dog leg in it. If this was pointing up or pointing down too much, you can take and overbend this and then bend it back up. But you want these to be fairly lined up when it's all said and done. With all that being said about all the different arms and the angle situations you might run into, we're going to get back to installing this arm on this car. You just line it up with the headpiece and the arm and make a line here. Again, you know, be careful. Check it two or three times. I Sometimes I'll cut it a little short and just sneak up on it. So now we'll, we've got this mark. We'll go over and cut it. We use a die grinder. Guys have used tubing cutters. There's a lot of ways to cut this. Once you, you're sure you have the right length, you're going to need to get a little rat tail file and clean this up so that deburr it so that the, uh, the Delrin bung will slide in there and mount this to the headpiece. Let's see how we did. As you can see, we got that cut just right. And with our little tension up, it lines up just right. Now, like I said previously, these are Delrin bungs, so they have a little give in them. So if your angle's off a little bit, you just want these as close to parallel as they can. If they're off a little bit, it's not a big problem. Same with the top, if they're off a little bit. It's not a big problem because there's some give in these bungs. So we're going to install this bung in here, raise this up, install it on here, put this all back together on this end, and go over and do the other side. At this point, the frame's installed on the car. I want to go over a couple of things before we move on to install the skin. First off is like we talked about, the pressure going back. You want this set right on a thin blanket, and as you see, as we pull pressure on this, what's going to happen when we put the top on, it's going to pull this up off the body, and it'll float above the body and won't touch your paint. The other thing is there's a peak here. This will also disappear when the skin's installed. When you pull the pressure on the skin, this will pull down. So don't let that bother you right now. And a third important thing is putting a detent on the post. These thumb screws are machined to a point. Run them in hard on the post. So this is all set down exactly where you want it. Run them in hard, put a little mark on the post, then come back with a little eighth inch drill and just drill a little detent in that post so that when you tighten this up, it's going into a small detent, and that way there's no way it can come off. A lot of guys even drill a larger hole and go all the way through. That's fine if you want to do it that way, but definitely make sure you at least put a detent on that so this thing cannot come up. Now we'll put the skin on. Now we're going to go over installing the skin. If you're doing a retrofit of one of our new removable curtain tops, you're going to have to change this snap. It's called a pull the dot and they only go on one direction or come off one direction. And you'll also have to measure down and install two snaps in the H piece. If you've purchased the top that way originally, all this will be done for you. So this is only if you've retrofitting one. And then also if you're installing a top that does not have the removable curtain, just ignore this part, snap it on and go right to the next part. Okay, we've changed these already. Now we're going to drill down and install these two snaps in the H piece. Okay, just hook your tape on the top of the crown of the tubing, measure down, mark at one inch, and drill a hole right in the center of that H piece at one inch down and install the snap. Okay, it's an eighth inch drill you'll use for these snaps. Now install the curtain and then put the skin on. The snap on the end of the curtain is what they call a pull the dot. It'll only go on and off one direction. So you have to, it starts from the inside and snaps out. And the same way when you remove it, you'll start from the outside, outside and move in.
There, the curtain's installed. Now we'll put the skin on. All these next few steps are gonna to pertain to the bop top that has a removable rear curtain. If you have a solid rear curtain, just snap this on and move ahead to stapling it towards the front. First thing we wanna do, help us out a little bit here so we're not fighting the Velcro, is put a piece of two inch tape across here so that it'll slide and move easily and won't stick on you. Lay the top up on here, take the inner flap and feed it through between the window curtain and the H piece. Pull the flap through. Pull it all the way right there and you can see where this Velcro and this Velcro are gonna come together at some point. But like I was saying with the tape there, now it's not sticking and you're not fighting it. Once you have the flap pulled through, pull the quarters down and snap all the snaps. Okay, at this point the installation is the same for either the rear curtain top or the smooth rear curtain top. As you can see, there's a cutout in the header bow for the seam. So line that up, and this is where your helper comes in hand. Line that up, he's gonna pull the top tight. You're gonna go back here and check and make sure you get that seam right dead on the center. Have him pull it a little tighter if you can, whatever it needs to get that lined up. You want this top really tight. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to describe what we mean by really tight, but you want it really tight. It's gonna loosen up a little bit in time, but you wanna start out a little extra tight. So he's gonna pull this while I check the back, and we'll put two staples in this seam, then we'll move over and do that seam. We do both seams first. Perfect. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. What I was back here checking when he was pulling and said, yeah, that's good enough, was I wanted this, this portion, the seam going forward and the seam over the back lined up on the center of the bow. Don't worry about this side yet and don't worry about that side yet. We'll deal with those in a minute. But we wanted to make sure that this portion of the seam is right on the center of the uh, bow. As you see, when you get to this side, it looks like the seam is not quite in the same place as the cutout in the bow. It is. It's made to pull to the side just a little bit. So you're gonna pull it tight and a little to the little to the side and pull it tight and it'll fall right in there. It's made that way so that you're pulling the top a little side to side. Same thing, he's gonna pull this here. I'm gonna check and make sure we get the seam exactly where we want it and we'll put two staples in here. Perfect, George. Okay, now we'll do the, the quarters and the sides, finish this off, and then we'll go back and do the center. Okay, we're gonna pull this quarter, pull this binding tight. He's gonna pull it forward. We're gonna find the bow near the back, at the bottom, and we're gonna put two staples in. Then we're just gonna stretch and pull the rest of this and work our way around the round part of the header bow. Get all the wrinkles pulled out. Take your time and pull it right. That's what it should end up looking like. Then we're gonna show you how to trim this off, pull the binding around, finish it off, put the trim on it. Okay, let me take a second and show you real quick here what we were talking about in the back. As you can see, once we started pulling this top tight forward, it's coming up off the body. If we would have left a big gap here, we'd have a huge gap here right now. So make sure you follow those directions and have that thing sitting right on the body before you start. Okay, we pull the tape out of there. Now you come back and you set this, you set this seam so that it's right on the edge of the, just like we talked about here, you set that seam right centered on that bow. Stick that Velcro down. Now we'll go pull the front. Okay, now we have that Velcro stuck down on the rear curtain. Now we're going to come and pull the front. We don't, we're going to start in the center and we don't pull it quite as hard as we pull each seam, but we still pull it pretty darn hard. The other thing I want to mention right here is the staple height. You're gonna put a three quarter inch item on the front of this, so keep your staples down well within a quarter inch of the bottom of the header bow. You'll also notice that center peak I talked about, when he pulls it hard in the center, it goes right flat like it's supposed to. Just 
Let's do a little section at a time. And then pull it. And always go back and take a look at your seam. Make sure you're happy with the way your seam's being pulled. It's nice and straight. Got good tension on the top. Come back and add some more staples. It's a slow process. Take your time and get it right. Remember, you only have to do this once. There's only one initial installation, then the top operates real simple after that. Now we'll finish off the cor corners here and install the item. Okay, now we're going to show you how to finish out this corner. First start by trimming right along the bottom of your row of staples. Be careful with the razor blade, this thing will get away from you real easy. Trim it around right to the two staples you put in. Stop right before the two staples. Now you'll just pull this around. I pull it around, I'm usually about three quarters of an inch from my seam. Just, you don't really pull it too tight, just give it a little tension. Pull it up there. Put one staple down low, down low in the header so you're not up here having problems with lumps when you put your hitem on. Then you just give this a little pull up and go right around. Thing just, just pulling this up ever so slightly. Now you got a nice finished corner. You'll trim this off real close to the staples, and we'll put our hitem over the whole thing, and it finishes out perfect. Once I get this trim, I usually come back and put one more staple right in the top of that seam just to hold it down real good so I don't end up with a lump when I put my hitem on. And I'll take the razor blade, cut the rest of this off, do the same thing on the other side, and we'll install the hitem. Okay, now we're going to install the hitem. The hitem is, is a trim that goes across here to hide, basically hide all the staples. It opens up and the staples go in the inside, then when it closes back down you can't see any staples. So we're going to open it up, we're going to start, I like to start right about the seam on this side, give myself enough plenty to go around here. It's even with the bottom of the header bow, put in a couple staples, pull it all around, again we're staying we're staying even with the bottom of the header bow. Just like that, that closes back up. And then I go to the other side, pull it real tight from side to side, and then come back and put the staples in the middle. If you try to go one at a time and work your way across, you're gonna end up with a wavy highway. So get it, pull it side to side, and then come back and put staples in the middle. Now, like I was saying, you open this up, Get to your seam here, pull it, pull it good and tight. You don't have to pull the heck out of it, but pull it good and snug. Make sure the bottom's lined up with the bottom of the header bow. Put a couple staples in and just work your way around. Now, as you can see, you've got a real, it's pulled taut and straight line. You can come back and it's easy to put all the staples in the middle, work your way across and keep it straight. A couple things I want to mention here. There's, there's wrinkles in this, there's little divots in it from being in the box. Same with the top. You'll see some wrinkles and some hard folds and whatnot on the skin. 24 hour, 48 hours out in the sun, all that stuff's gone, not to worry about it. And just open this up, get your staple gun started inside, and then it just slides inside there. Again, I, I just go a little bit at a time, make sure the bottom, Again, there's no, there's no hurry on this first insulation. You may be in a hurry, stuck out in the rain, want to put your top on, and it'll, it'll operate real well to take the time here and install it properly. I'm checking as I go all the way, make sure my bottom edge stays perfect with the bottom of the header bow.
Yeah, a term we like to use here in the shop, you could launch missiles off that thing. Now we need to do to finish, put the Heidem ends on. Remember those two staples we keep talking about here at the end? You want to cut that Heidem just a touch past those two staples. Not much, about sixteenth of an inch. Then I also take and just take a little bit of the corners off that because the Heidem goes to a point. I'll take a little, take a little off each side, make a point out of it. Then you'll see the Heidem in. We'll fit right over that. Cover that all up. Drill a three thirty seconds hole, install the screw, and we're all done. Go back and take a minute and close up all the hide You can push it around a little bit if you get a little off somewhere. It's easy to it's easy to move it around a little bit. Put the other hide in. And at this point, if you have the one with the no removable rear curtain, you're done. Now we're going to go over a couple more things on the removable rear curtain. Then I have a little tip, couple tips for you at the end, and we're all done. Hide is sometimes just a touch bigger than the thing. Run it down part way, tuck all your hide ends in behind your chrome trim, then tighten it up. There you go, trim's on. You guys that have the non-removable rear curtain top, top's finished. And I want to go over a couple of things before we finish up the rear curtain on this top. First off, the assembly of this top takes place on the bench or on the floor. So the easiest way to operate this top is remove it just as you see it here. Take it off, take it apart, put it in the bags, reassemble it on the bench, then set it on the car. It's much easier than trying to assemble it on your car and safer for your car's paint. The other thing is, this is Hart's Stay Fast material. It's really high quality convertible top material. The best way we found to clean it is with compressed air and air hose to blow off most of your dirt and dust. If you do want to wash it, take it off the car. You can set it right on the driveway. Take a mild soap and water and a soft bristle brush. Scrub the whole thing down. Rinse it real good. Let it dry. It'll look like you ruined it. Believe me, it'll dry and look like new. One more very important thing. As you saw, this top was installed very tight. It needs to take a set. So the longer this top can remain in the up, stretched position, the better. We recommend a minimum of two weeks, but the longer the better. If you were to take this top off right now and try to snap it back on, it would be very, very difficult. So the longer it can take a set, the better it is. Let's finish the curtain and we're done. Okay, now we're going to finish up this curtain and show you how to remove it and install the little piece that hides the bar in the back. This flap that we push through first, it goes up and over the center bow and Velcro's back. And what this does is this keeps the tension on the top when the rear curtain is removed. So we'll just feed it through, get it pulled through, get it pulled over the bow, pull it around, and Velcro it to itself. Put a good little tension on it. The Velcro should line up. Cinch that down, and that keeps, like I said, that keeps tension on the top when the rear curtain is removed. Now we're going to remove the rear curtain and install the little flap that covers the bar in the back. We've unsnapped the top two snaps. We'll unvelcro across here. You have to help the snap over the Get it through and remove the curtain. If you're retrofitting for the removable curtain, you're going to have to s install this small piece of Velcro on the inside for the flap. It's pressure sensitive, peel and stick, but we found if you use a heat gun and get the pressure sensitive part good and warm, it sticks a lot better. So we're not going to go through that process here and take the time, but if you'll take a heat gun, heat the back of this up and and get it warm, it'll stick a lot better. You're just going to put this right on the inside, straight facing forward. Just like that. Stick it down. 
Then we'll install the flap. This just snaps on just like the top. With a little flap inside, you got a little Velcro on it, you'll just turn it just to pull it in just a bit so that it goes up at the angle of the top. There you have it with the removed curtain. The insulation of the rear curtain is done just the opposite of the way we just removed it. Thank you very much.